Hello, everyone. Shrinking CSS. This is the About Me slide. A friend challenged me to use this. So. Contrary to the popular belief, this is not me. But uh, all right. These are my credentials. And on the agenda today, let's start with a bit of a rant. Um, so my main motivation behind this thing is that I don't really know CSS, and this was sort of a learning experience. I was hoping by learning to parse CSS in Minify, I'll learn something. <sighs> this thing is hard. Uh, so luckily for me and you, uh, Patrick is going to talk about uh, the critical path in CSS, and Nico is going to talk about performance, so I don't have to give you my performance uh, motivation. But um, the main thing is that everything else on the page is or can be asynchronous other than CSS. Uh, it's on the way of rendering anything on the page. So I have to make sure it's as small as it possibly can. The rant with CSS. Uh, one of the problems with CSS is that it's too easy, almost. So you, you find something, and then you style it. And it's almost too easy. And it's surprising that anyone should be paid money to do this thing, right? <laughs> But, but then it becomes very, very quickly becomes really, really hard. So when you try to lay something out on a page, uh, center something, you know, all those things, block formatting context, specificity, cascade inheritance, all, the, all those things. Actually, that's a pretty good uh, list if you're interviewing someone and you know, ask uh, the candidate to explain to you one of those topics. It becomes hilarious pretty quickly. And this is what Douglas Crockford had to say about CSS. It's a long, fragile list of self-contradictory rules. <laughs> and maybe you have seen this thing, right? CSS, everything is, oh my god. So why did I write all those things? Why did I send it to the browser and all oh, my users have to download this thing? It's all not needed, right? So uh, CSS being so hard, the result is that it, it, it quickly becomes uh, very big and out of proportion. and. Um, refactoring this thing is, is almost impossible. You have to just sit down and scrape everything and start over if you want to have any sort of clean code. The solution to that CSS problem is that we can learn CSS, right? And uh, luckily, recently, there's been a lot of talk about uh, architecting CSS and uh, making it reusable and so on. I have a few pointers at the end. Uh, but meanwhile, while we learn CSS, we can minify the stuff that we have so far. That's with the rand. So um, I think uh, looking at the, at the available CSS minifiers out there, I think we're leaving a lot of stuff on the table. And um, the existing minifiers are either based on regular expressions, uh, like the YUI CSS minifier, or based on some sort of parser that I called partially parsing. Because, um, see, this is what you get in, in JavaScript, what you, what you like to have, right? Some sort of, OK, this is my CSS rule. I have a bunch of selectors, and I have some declarations. And it looks nice, and, uh, and I can work with that. I can uh, see if I can minify any of those. But as you can see, this, is, this isn't really proper uh, syntax tree, because you, there are some values that you still have to parse and, and figure out what's going on. And, it quickly becomes, all right, so if, if I'm given this string, how, how do I decide what to minify and what, what to rewrite and so on? Uh, so I still have to do some parsing. So that's why I call those uh, partial parsing, partial parsers. And quickly, especially with more complicated properties like the background, right? I don't even have enough room here. Um, so how you deal with that? How, how do you find what to rewrite here? Uh, so I, I was contributing to the YUI CSS minifier, which is based on regular expressions, and there's no parser. So you have things like that, uh, some horrendous-looking regular expressions that are meant to strip some spaces. They work pretty well most of the time. Uh, right? You can strip spaces here, you can strip spaces here, but it turns out that I know in calc, for example, you cannot just blindly strip spaces around the plus sign because it matters. Uh, so it, it quickly becomes uh, not so powerful in terms of what sort of minification it can do. So um, looking at the, at the bug queue that people are sending, oh, I want to minify this, and this is not working, and so on, I said, OK, this thing needs a parser, and I'm going to write me one. 
and um, I tried and uh, then I abandoned it. Um, it was years ago. Um, there was no CSS parser written in JavaScript yet. Uh, uh, so I said, okay, I'm even going to do some, you know, pull a Crockford here and, and do a little diagrams and, you know, figure out how to parse all those things. Uh, turns out it's more work than I was willing to do. So I forgot all about it. And then I, I came back to it and said, okay, there's, there's now CSS parser out there. And I chose this one called Mensch by uh, Brett Stimmerman. So at, at this point, there's uh, the Nicholas Akers and Nicole have the CSS lint, which has a CSS parser. Uh, this uh, TJ, whatchamacallit, uh, has a CSS parser as well, used in, in this really nice tool called Rework. Um, and it was also a partial parser, right? It, it would give me the, the values, but then I have to parse through them as well. Um, and I, was, I, I got pretty far there, but uh, when it comes to minifying, um, CSS uh, shorthands like font and background and so on. Uh, because when you write a minifier, right, where there's any sort of shortening, that's where you should be spending time. Uh, so then I had to parse all those things. So then eventually I gave it up uh, and found this other parser called Gonzales, which has uh, a better syntax tree, uh, much, much more detailed. And it looks something like this. It's not very easy to work with because it's all arrays, uh, right? But uh, at, at least I don't have to parse the font tag because it has already right, dimensions, uh, identifier, right? Uh, strings, operators, and all that stuff. So this is something I, I can work with, although it's not all that uh, easy to, you know, parse through arrays. Uh, and the result was this tool I called CSS Shrink. Uh, so you can go to, uh, what is it, CSS? Shrink. And play with it. It's not feature complete yet. It's not where I, I want it to be, but um, I'll learn some stuff along the way that I wanted to share with you. Um, so uh, I don't know, you, can, you can write some stuff and see the... Uh, the results here, minified, and then kind of pretty what was stripped and what was before and after. So I'll quickly run through all the, the sort of stuff that you can do to CSS to minify it. Um, the first thing to do, of course, is to strip all the, all the unnecessary spaces and comments. Uh, and this is, this is pretty safe uh, transform that you can do. And in fact, I, uh, I have this as a separate tool called Pretty Ugly uh, that you can prettyfy or, or uglify CSS only when it comes to comments and, uh, and spaces. Next, colors, right. Uh, there's a, there's a, a, a library on NPM called Color, I think, uh, that I used uh, to basically just brute force and take any color value uh, and get all the, all the available representations of it and pick the, the smallest one. Right. So as a, as a side effect, uh, it, it also supports uh, uh, HSL and, and all that other syntaxes. So if you use this sort of minifier, you can, you can, uh, you can use HSL, which will then be rewritten if possible. It, it will become R RGB, uh, or if it's smaller, it will become one of those. So that's a nice side effect. Zeros and numbers, right? Uh, most of the time, you can you can strip uh, the unit from from zero values. Most of the time, not always. Uh, you can also strip percentages. Most of the time, uh, you can strip leading zeros. Quotes. So if if any sort of minification fails, uh, the least I can do is uh, is be consistent and hope that this thing helps with uh, with gzipping. So. Just using consistent quotes and, and removing the quotes where where uh, possible. Right? Turns out, let's say for example in font family, you don't need those those quotes. Although we we all use them when you have a list value, the comma is enough. Keyframes. If I see the word from, I make it zero percent. If I see a hundred percent, I make it two because it's shorter. Right? Uh, all the uh, pseudo selectors. Um, they have this this old syntax, which is a little shorter, uh, and it, yeah, and there's a there's a quirk in IE that needs to be addressed. So 
Uh, IE filters, right? I don't have enough room, I guess, to show this whole thing. But um, there's this uh, there's this syntax that people use uh, for for IE uh, filters. But turns out that there's something called IE4 syntax, which is much much shorter. So so any of any of those values can be transformed to this uh, shorter thing. The, the worrying thing is if, if you read about IE filters on MSDN, uh, it uh, warns you against using those short uh, filters because for performance reasons. But um, I spoke to some people from, from IE and Microsoft, and they say this is, you should ignore this. Uh, even, even, I mean, it, it doesn't, doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things uh, at all. And maybe it's, it's just historical, but at this point it doesn't matter at all if it mattered. So don't be worried about if you see warnings about performance. Uh, bold can be shorter. Normal font weight can be shorter. Like I said, if everything else fails, the least I can do is make everything consistent. So using consistent uh, lowercase everywhere. And hope this helps gzipping. Next, there's some structural changes that, that, uh, that uh, we can do to minify stuff, right? Uh, if, you, if you have any empty thing or, or some invalid CSS in here, so this thing should, should, be, should go. Uh, if you have duplicate declarations, right, uh, the, the last one wins. In this case, you know, even after the, the colors are transformed, then you, you find out that this is actually the same, the same declaration, so you can strip the one above. Duplicate selectors, right? it happens. Right? If you have the same selector twice, you can remove one of them. Adjacent selectors, right? you if you have uh, two selectors right after each other, uh, then you can merge the declaration, uh, the declarations inside of them. If you have blocks that happen to be the same right after each other, then you can merge the selectors uh, and, uh, and have one block. If you have adjacent, yeah, everything has to be adjacent uh, with CSS because they, uh, that matters. Um, if you have adjacent media, prop, um, media queries, then, uh, and then you can merge those as well. And there is a whole bunch of other random nonsense that can be uh, fixed, right? If you have uh, more than one generic font, that doesn't make any sense, but it happens out there. So uh, you can strip uh, anything but the first generic font, right? Serif. Sans serif, that sort of thing. Uh, believe it or not, people write invalid CSS, which then the browsers will have to uh, remove. Uh, so it would be great if we don't send it to the browser at all. Uh, and there's some, some other uh, things that are a little bit more dangerous. Um, you know, some, some uh, properties that don't make sense. Uh, but uh, it's a little dangerous. Like, if you have... Uh, if you have zero border, uh, why do you care about the color of this border since it doesn't exist? Right? But uh, the problem is that you might have some JavaScript manipulating uh, the CSS and then suddenly it matters. So that's a little bit more dangerous and something to avoid uh, writing CSS with JavaScript if possible. Shorthands, of course, uh, the, the sort of trouble properties, top, right, bottom, left, uh, they, can be, uh, and they can be merged into shorthands. Fonts, borders, backgrounds, and all that good stuff. Uh, that's a, a perfect thing to, to uh, minify. We can, we can do some unit conversions, right? If you have 100, 1,000 milliseconds, it's shorter to say it's just one second, right? Uh, even crazy things like this, using inches instead of pixels. Uh, so, uh, just going quickly through this thing, so if, if you see any, if I say anything stupid, just please tell me. Um, afterwards. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's an open source project, so I'm just looking for any more ideas for, to minify or any, anything stupid that I might be doing. If you have duplicate keyframes, right, uh, the, the second one should win. Uh, and then renaming. So that, that's the problem with, with minifying CSS, unlike JavaScript, where you can minify the variable names. Uh, there's not much uh, that you can minify in, let's say, uh, Helvetica, new Helvetica, Arial, Sans Serif. Right? There's no way to minify this thing. But uh, luckily now we have CSS variables, which are also um, uh, supported in some browsers. So uh, that's, a, that's a perfect thing to, to minify and use variables where, where applicable. 
All right. Uh, the problem with the, so I think the, the purpose of this talk is mostly convincing you that we can do some, some CSS transformation and shouldn't be afraid to do it. Because now everyone, everyone does some sort of JavaScript transformation, right, if you want to support ECMAScript 6 features. Uh, but we're not so comfortable making CSS uh, transforms. But uh, we should be. Uh, so um, even if you cannot, for some reason, use less uh, or any of those uh, preprocessors, um, that doesn't mean you cannot do any, any CSS transformation on your own. But then how do you know that works, right? How do you know that you didn't break anything? Uh, so while working on this minifier, I had to do a bunch of other uh, tools. And uh, this is where NPM is uh, invaluable, uh, because you can split uh, your work into different uh, sub-modules, or you can use modules that exist already. So that's perfect. So I uh, ended up creating a whole bunch of NPM packages. Um, uh, this one is just, uh, oh, yeah, by the way, so there's this side. Uh, this um, the main name was expiring, so I snatched it. It's not a really beautiful site, but it just has a bunch of uh, links. So if you if you want to contribute to the project or, or do any sort of uh, transformation, then this is one of the tools that you can use to say, uh, right, whatever, uh, and explore the uh, the AST that it, uh, that you can use then to manipulate that. CSS div, yeah, so how do you make sure that you didn't break anything in your CSS transformation? Um, CSS test battery, just a bunch of uh, all, all the CSS files from CSS and Garden and some popular libraries that you can use to test. Uh, this is probably my favorite, BS CSS. Um, and this is something that I uh, urge you to explore um, and not send CSS to the browsers that don't know what to do with it. Um, so that's why this sub sub project called CSS properties where you just uh, see what um, uh, just enumerate all the properties that the browser supports, and then you can say, okay, if if this browser doesn't support this property, then I can safely remove it. I mentioned about uh, pretty prettify and uglifying. Uh, yeah, so that's the beauty of, C of NPM, that uh, I found a, a color library that I can use. So uh, instead of doing the, the CSS color transformations on my own, I can just uh, write another library that, that uses this one and just does, does the minification of colors. Uh, things that are coming up. So uh, I mentioned CSS uh, shorthands, uh, which is something that the minifier should do, but mine doesn't yet. Uh, and uh, in order to do that, then you have to validate the CSS before that, right? Because when you start parsing the font tag, for example, uh, because things can be in, in different order, and then you have to, uh, to validate that this is a, a regular tag. So um, that's pending on this lint tool uh, before I can do the shorthands. So I mentioned about the CSS diff, um, right? So you, you have a CSS before, and you do some transformation, and you have CSS after. So just run in the browser uh, before and after, take a screenshot, and compare all the pixels and see if there's anything uh, different after the transformation. If there is even a single pixel, that means something broke. So I'm using uh, uh, PhantomJS uh, for WebKit, SlimmerJS for uh, uh, Firefox, Trifle.js for IE, and there's, there's a project called Dalek.js, which is, I think, almost there that does all of these things and more. Um, so that's something you can explore. So I mentioned that the BS CSS, um, a lot of people are not comfortable doing the uh, server-side sniffing, but um, I think it's, it's necessary evil in this case. So oh, the horror. I have to sniff uh, on the server-side what kind of browser it is and send it only the, the CSS it understands, uh, which I think is a worthy goal and uh, have to bite the bullet and do some server-side sniffing. So uh, you can remove um, uh, prefixes and any unsupported properties, let's say IE hacks. So Firefox, Chrome, they don't need to know anything about star hacks and underscore hacks and so on. Um, and um, yeah, actually I tried it with Bootstrap and in, uh, 
In some other IE, you can actually, if you use that BS, BS CSS, you can safely strip half of it uh, in IE. And just there's too much going on. Just a quick thing, if you, if you want to contribute to the project, uh, it's using this um, visitors pattern where if any, any CSS transform is a, is a visitor and lives in different files, so it's kind of manageable, and it looks like this, right? So you, you create a, if you want to add a feature, you create a, a, a module that contains a test and a process method. So you test whether or not you should do any transform here, and then you, you do it in, in the process method. Uh, so this is the example of how simple it is the, uh, to, to make all the, all the spaces consistent, right? Any tabs, new lines, and so on. All right, too much talking. What, what's in it for me? Uh, what have you learned today? Uh, you can try the, the CSS shrink. Uh, like I said, it's not feature complete yet. It, it works pretty well, but uh, there's, there's some more things that I would like to add to it. Uh, it's an NPM module, so it can be part of the, of the process. And I think uh, people have already written um, uh, plugins for, for popular uh, static resource management systems like uh, Gulp and, and Grunt. Uh, seriously consider uh, the browser-specific CSS. It's just uh, sending, we're sending too much CSS to the browsers that just end up parsing it and throwing it away. So why should the, uh, the user suffer it from this thing? Uh, yeah, like I mentioned, a, a lot of those tools uh, have, uh, have little demos that you can play with, right? Um, so you feel free to explore this thing. Uh, let me just quickly show you. Let's say we have uh, we have uh, some CSS property that is specific to IE, right? And then you can see in the browser specific CSS. Let's say, okay, how it's going to look in Firefox? Yeah, it's gone. How it's going to look in uh, in IE? Right, it's there with with the prefix stripped. Uh, yeah. So these these are the, the type of uh, you know kind of generic. And I don't go into versions of Chrome and Firefox, uh, just just versions in IE. Uh, but you can explore and just paste something and see how how small it becomes in a different browser. Classes. Uh, yeah. So like I said, some of some of the minifications that uh, that we can do are, are sort of dangerous uh, in. In that, uh, if you have uh, JavaScript manipulating CSS, um, then it, things might break, uh, things that otherwise can be stripped. So it's always better to um, don't do that, but instead use classes and change them. And um, so there, there's a bunch of uh, of new thinking about organizing CSS and, and architecting it. There's Mac CSS, uh, object-oriented CSS, anything by Nicholas uh, Gallagher. And my favorite one is this CSS for grumpy old man. Um, it's a really beautiful thing. Yeah, don't be afraid to, to transform CSS. Uh, that's, that's what I would like to encourage everyone to do. Um, why, why leave all the fun for, to JavaScript uh, and, and do all the, all the sort of JavaScript transformation, but leave CSS on the table. So like I said, even if you cannot use uh, less uh, or any of the preprocessors or post-processors, that doesn't mean you cannot write your own using any, any of those uh, parsers available, whether it's uh, uh, the Gonzalez with a very detailed AST or, or something simpler, right? Like rework, it's really, really easy uh, to do. So things like uh, variables, right, which are more, more kind of a constants if you want to transform them, right? There's no reason why you shouldn't be using uh, variables these days, right? Uh, because it's been missing from CSS for quite a while. Now it's there, but not in every browser. So why not just write modern CSS and have this transformation process take care of all the browsers? So um, yeah, uh, you can transform stuff like, uh, uh, like you can use more modern ways to define a color or, or opacity and so on and leave it to the to the transformation process to take care of, of all the other browsers. And yep, that's all I have to say. Thanks very much. <laughs>